so cool. Look at that train. I've never seen that before. Oh, shit. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sen sensory overload. Okay, so finally I get to I get to show off this Chinook. This this car or this truck I should say this RV has been uh, a build for the last couple of years. It's something that I've been wanting to do for years and years. You know, I'm I'm a guy in my 50s and and way back when I was a, a, a teenager and in my early 20s, I was always into off-roading and for, for buying and doing all sorts of four-wheel drive stuff. And of course, we were super excited. Uh, to, to, to do any kind of trip involving anything all-terrain. And of course, uh, you know, the, the thing we would always do is me and my buddies would, would gather up all of our, our trucks and we'd go out on these excursions and we'd plan this uh, weekend trip out in the desert or up in Big Bear. And of course, we, we would all sleep in tents or sleep in sleeping bags in the back of our trucks or in the back of our blazers or our Toyota pickups. And we would always say, God, wouldn't it be great to bring a camper out here? But the train was a little rough and couldn't do it. So uh, I always wanted to build a truck like this. And of course, as I got older, there was the overland uh, uh, mo uh, movement that, that just kind of took over. and manufacturers started building these insane RVs and, and you know half a million dollars later you've got an RV that you could take out into the woods and, and, and live in comfortably but you know um, not on a budget for me it wasn't suitable it wasn't something that I could afford so um, now that I'm a shop owner and and I've got a, a crew of guys that we're all friends and we work together and we could pretty much build whatever we want I thought okay you know I'm gonna build my own and so that's that's what that's what stands behind me. Uh, the idea was was to take a a, a Chinook. I, I'm a big fan of the Chinook Class B RV. The thing that attracts me the most about the Class B Chinook is is it's a it's a full fiberglass body. It's a monocoque body. It's built almost identically to how a boat is built. So there's no seams. It's seamless. And in terms of off roading, it seemed that it would be a great vehicle to turn into an RV. Uh, less stress cracks and capable of performing, you know, some some uneven pavement, uneven uneven roads. And uh, so, Alex and I went down. We 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 picked up a, a you know a, a Class B uh, Chinook. It was an 04, and um, it was a V10 two-wheel drive gas-powered RV with about 70,000 miles on it, and it was relatively clean. Um, we literally bought it off of a, an RV lot, and. Uh, brought it back to the shop, you know, wrote them a check, brought it back to the shop, and then we started looking into, all right, how are we gonna make this four-wheel drive? We know Quigley's was uh, a, an organization that, um, you know, specializes in turning E-class vans into four-wheel drives. And so, uh, started making some inquiries, and I get on eBay, and I start thumbing through eBay, and I found this, this, this cabin chassis. It's an ambulance cabin chassis that uh, uh, a, a, a volunteer fire department on the east coast um, used uh, for for you know for their for their services and hardly put any miles on it because it was a four-wheel drive chassis and of course the people that were using it um, were concerned that it might be a little bit too rough of a ride you know for for the patients in the back so it 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 hardly had any miles on it um, and what had happened was just because of the age um, they retired it, they took the ambulance box off the back of it, and, um, uh, and they sold it as a cabin chassis. Now, it already had the Quigley converted four-wheel drive drivetrain uh, done to it. it. It was, in fact, a six-liter turbo diesel, uh, which I was really looking for. Uh, honestly, I wanted a 7.3, but I wanted a newer body, so the six-liter engine, is, is I, was, uh, I was perfectly okay with accepting the six-liter uh, diesel engine. Um, being that it only had 12,500 miles on it, it was a bargain. So I bought the cabin chassis and brought it back to the shop and that's where, you know, we started getting crazy. We started putting it together. We looked at it. It just so happened that the, 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 uh, the cabin chassis wheelbase was nearly identical to that of the, of the uh, Class B Chinook, uh, you know, uh, RV. And, uh, and so, we put it together, we married it together, we did, we did extensive modifications to it. The previous model, it had a, a, a different headlight assembly, different grills and whatnot. Modernized the front end. I put a 2017, uh, 2018 uh, front end assembly on it. Uh, you know, it started life as a white cabin chassis uh, with a white box, 
uh, wanted to go with a Mercedes silver. I fell in love with this silver and uh, we pulled it right out of the, the DuPont book. And it, it's a, it's, I believe it's a 2017 or 2018 Mercedes silver metallic. Um, you know, when we uh, started pulling the assemblies, uh, you know, the front end assembly off of the truck and, and the cab, uh, it was just a great opportunity to uh, paint the entire engine bay in, in this paint, which really kind of gives it, the, gives it the appearance that it was, it was made and manufactured this color uh, from Ford. And so we, we went through that. Extensive uh, body work was done uh, to the monocoque body. Um, as you could see, we, we customized our own fender flares. Um, we wanted to uh, uh, give it that durable off-road look. And so uh, we, we, we ended up making our own flares. If you come around this side, um, this, uh, the original Class B uh, Chinook body uh, had a rather extensive luggage compartment on the bottom right here. And I was concerned it sat, it sat nearly six inches, seven inches lower and I was worried about ground clearance issues. So um, we went ahead and cut all of that off. We put a smaller box. This box retains the batteries. It retains the actual uh, chassis batteries. And uh, then you have your, your, uh, your heater assembly here. Uh, but it just cleaned up the bottom side uh, of this side. The other side actually matches. And then of course, coming around to the back, I wanted to modernize it a little bit. I didn't care for the original you know, 2004, 2005 E chassis taillight assembly. So I went with the, the Ford Raptor taillights, um, which kind of gives it that really cool, you know, neon look uh, at night. Um, and, and it just kind of really updates it quite a bit. In terms of lighting, we went with Rigid Industries exterior lighting throughout. So, so this entire uh, rear bumper assembly is completely custom made. And uh, we built this swing away uh, spare tire rack and, and the way that works is, is just by unclipping it, it swings away conveniently. It exposes this box. This box area is additional storage area and it's also uh, the area that accesses the plumbing for the bathroom. You know, this is a built-in integrated handle here. And of course the ladder rack, which is made out of aluminum, this is all steel, but this is made out of aluminum for easy access to the roof. We, we took a mixture of graphics. We ended up going with a, uh, uh, with a kind of a, a, a Raptor style graphic and we just kind of integrated the Overland name onto it um, just to kind of showcase its off-road ability. We went with the Agile uh, tuned Fox front and rear shocks, uh, Agile tuned Fox steering stabilizers, and then Agile front variable rate front springs, 1.5 inch rear sway bar kit. Went with standard truck, uh, SD truck HD, uh, 10 uh, leaves the rear spring pack and we went with an airlift wireless rear airbag leveling system uh, that really helps in terms of if you're towing something you could uh, automatically put some air pressure in the back and raise the rear end of it up in terms of wheels and tires uh, we went with Mopar aluminum dually wheels they're custom fitted they're 245 75 R17s they're Goodyear Wranglers uh, MTRs with Kevlar tires the Kevlar tires are coarse for weight. Um, it's great in terms of added stability for for a uh, for a an RV with a higher with a higher roof mount. All right, so you know one of the things that I was mostly concerned about in in building this this kind of Overland style vehicle was as much as I, I love generators and I don't think there's anything wrong with having a generator uh, you know at a campsite. Um, you know, especially to power up your equipment and whatnot, and emergency equipment especially. I didn't want that for this RV. Um, so we went full solar, we went full E. We, we installed, uh, you know, uh, Tesla style batteries. And uh, as a result, um, you could see on the roof that it has got more solar panels than you'll ever possibly need. I mean, this thing will literally, um, as long as it's not a cloudy, miserable day, uh, you're going to have plenty of power powering those batteries. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but you don't hear a generator. What you hear is the AC unit on the roof, and it's being powered by the batteries uh, in, the, in the unit. We ended up going with a Mach 8 Plus uh, AC and heat unit. Uh, we added a Starlight Solar Power Systems Kit, uh, Midnight Classic 150 Solar Charge Controller. Uh, it's running lithium RV batteries with a 400 uh, amp package. 
uh, Go Power Industries pure sine wave inverter, 3,000 watt continuous power, uh, Go Power uh, inverter remote, uh, 700 watts of solar. With regards to the interior, uh, the Chinook body and interior were completely renovated with modern appliances and all new smooth coated and cleared cabinetry. The headliner was completely redone with a matching suede headliner. The seat upholstery is a durable leatherette style material and the flooring is a high, uh, highly durable rubber base mat for easy cleaning and, and it's really easy to install as well. Uh, this floor plan consists of a large queen size fold out bed, a full kitchen and a private shower and toilet. Additionally, uh, this unit still retains its original fresh water tank and custom made gray water tank for the sink and shower. There is no black tank since we went with a cartridge style toilet. You know, I didn't mind the six liter engine. Yes, they are known for having some issues. However, if those issues are addressed, it's got great longevity and it's actually a really good engine and drivetrain setup. So what we decided to do, even though this thing only has 13 or 12,500, 13,000 miles on it now, we didn't want to chance it. We sent the engine out. Um, we went with UCF machine shop O-ring cylinder heads. We went with, went with new OEM Ford rocker arms, new OEM Ford injectors, bulletproof diesel complete oiling system upgrade, including square EGR cooler, upgraded engine oil filtration, larger oil cooler, we went with new OEM Ford head gasket kit, new ARP head studs, bulletproof diesel billet water pump, bulletproof diesel upgraded 7.3 mechanical fan and adapter. We went with a new OEM Garrett Turbo GT3782, and of course custom mounted upgrade Ford F350 intercooler. Additionally, we went with four inch uh, ceramic coated sided uh, exit exhaust, and let me tell you, it sounds amazing. A lot of people think that it actually sounds like a, uh, like a 1J or a 2J. Just in, in summary, this has been a really fun build. Everybody has really enjoyed it. It gets a lot of attention where it goes. It's not so big that you can't take it to Home Depot and park it in a parking stall. Uh, we're out here at Irvine Park, and it's just a great place. Who am I going to yell at? Who am I going to yell at? Who the hell is calling me right in the middle of filming? John Martin. Hang on. Hey, John, I'm just filming right now. Can I call you right back? Okay, bye. Okay, take, take two. Okay. All right, so in summary and in closing, I wanted to just really show this rig off. Uh, it's been a really fun build. A lot of us have put a lot of time, a lot of effort into this thing. And as you can see, it's not so big that you can't take it to Home Depot and parking it in a parking lot without pissing off everybody around you. Uh, it's small enough to pretty much go where you need to go. Obviously, there's some height issues. You can't drive it through a drive through but you could certainly take it to like where we are now at Irvine Park and, and put the awning out and set up a little picnic table and just have a great time with family or friends. And, uh, and you could take it off road, take it where most RVs can't go. Uh, you'll see that this thing has got some pretty decent ground clearance and uh, it's a kind of a go anywhere type vehicle. Yes, it's heavy. Yes, it can't go rock climbing. <laughs> it can't do the things that a lot of RVs can do, or it can't do a lot of things that four buyers, four buys can do, but it could certainly take you out uh, to places where you otherwise wouldn't be able to bring your home. It, it, was a, it was a long project, a lot of hands on it, lots of thinking, and I think the ultimate uh, plan to build a go anywhere, live off grid, not reliant on shore power or land power, I think we achieved our goal. And uh, it's exciting, it gets a lot of looks, it drives phenomenally well, great horsepower. Um, we're excited, we're all excited about this build and I'm excited to share it with you. So thanks for watching, please subscribe, you know, please hit the like button, it really helps us out a lot. It, it provides uh, YouTube with the knowledge that people like our content and, and it'll push our content to more viewers. Uh, our goal is, is to continue to share our builds with you, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.